This is Azimut's brand new Fly 53, and in fact, this is its UK premiere here at St. Cat's Dock in London. So a good opportunity to have a look at this one and bring you guys the full tour. It's a nice looking boat, actually. Let's head on all the way back, hop down, and we are, as ever, gonna go into every area. So decks, cabins, engine space, the lot. <laughs> you knew it was coming, didn't you? So we'll step on back here. High-low platform on this one. And in fact, the other thing to mention while we're at this end of the boat is this, which is a massive storage area. So if we go to open and pull, this is a really great place for deck gear and all that kind of stuff. It goes all the way across the boat. Now, my guess is you could probably opt to have that fitted out as a crew cabin if you wanted to. However, 53 foot, these are normally owner operated. So that's probably a better idea to have it as a deck locker like that, I would suggest, unless you really do want to have an occasional crew. There we go. Let's pop that back. Try not to trap my fingers. There we go. Yeah, it's even got a window in it, so I'm pretty sure that could be a crew cabin if you wanted it to be. So we step up here into the cockpit. You've got the seating across the back. You've got the big table here. There's also a little wet bar over here. So the sink is like so. And then you've also got your ice maker in there. And a bit of storage. There's a head unit for the Fusion Hi-Fi system that lives in underneath there. And of course you can put some direct chairs around here and sit all the way around there if you wanted to dine. Flybridge up there, we'll look at that in a minute of course, but we'll head inside first of all. Slip my shoes off. Now we've gone for the galley aft layout on this one. So that's really helpful for catering straight out to the deck areas. Again, being an owner-operated boat, of course, these are really popular. This is mostly fridge. There we go, really good size. You've got the fridge freezer in there. And then we've got the Miele induction hob, four burners on there. The sink lives underneath that one, like so. There's a bit of storage up above. And there's a dishwasher as well down underneath. And then this, they've used every little area, so this pulls out. So you've got storage in there for bottles or cans or whatever. That's for your cutlery, of course. More storage underneath. And then if we look over on this side, this is, in case you're wondering, <laughs> where the oven is. And then this is for your crockery, which you need to unclip so it doesn't slide open when you're at sea. There we go. All very nice, all the proper azimuth stuff, little espresso cups in there as well. There we go. So that is that, and that is the hi-fi unit and a wine cooler. And that underneath there is the control panels. So all your switch gear, circuit breakers, all that kind of stuff. That's all hidden from view, but easily accessed. There we go. Air conditioning controls are up here and light switches. And then we've got a couple of steps up into the saloon area. Now the table on here is electrically adjustable. It drops up and down. Also, you can slide it open, put a leaf in the center and make that into a much bigger dining area if you want. But it's a really nice social space. There's a TV that comes out of here. I think I'm right in saying a 43 inch, so a decent size. And I like the way they've done the lighting up here. That looks good. Looks like it's strobing. It's not actually in real life. <laughs> it's quite a pleasing effect, isn't it? That's something you should think about. All very pale and contemporary. You've got the big windows as well, of course. And then over here is the lower helm, which is a flybridge boat. So there's another helm position upstairs. Lift bolster seats. And then across here, I like the way they've done this sort of pod like this for your multifunction displays. That looks very smart. And then across here, you've got the traditional azimuth steering wheel, throttle controls. She's on IPS, so there's an IPS controller. That's a joystick which enables you to actually manoeuvre the boat. So push it to the side and the whole boat goes sideways, twist it and the boat will turn on its axis. And there's a bow thruster as well if you need it. Although you don't generally with this because it does pretty much everything, but it's just a, another function. This is all low glare material in around here. You've got the compass there as well, of course. And these fellas here are demisters. 
So if you're using the boat in the winter and it's all a bit damp and wet, you can keep the screen clear. Of course, you've got the big wipers on the outside as well. So very practical. So that is the main deck. If we head on down, this will take us down, of course, to the lower deck. That's where all the accommodation is. Nice little foyer area here. We'll head forward first of all. This is the VIP guest cabin. Really good size, actually. And that's a nice job of this. They brought the bulkhead well back. And so you've got plenty of floor space in here. You've got TV built in here as well. If we go across onto this side, that then is the ensuite. And then you've got the shower in there, which is fantastic. What they've done is they've used, by bringing this bulkhead right back, you've got like a false bulkhead, well, not a false bulkhead, but a second bulkhead here. And that's what gives you such a big heads compartment. That's really good. You'll notice there's a door here as well. That's actually from that passageway. So this is a day heads as well. So it's dual purpose, as you often find in this size of boat. I'll show you the access to that in a moment. In here then is big hanging lockers. This is all storage in places like this all the way around. And some nice finishes in here. Very Italian, very smart, very contemporary. That takes you up to a hatch in the foredeck. So that's another way out of this area if it was ever needed. I'll show you that on the outside. And then if we go across here, There we go, hanging locker again. And there's a bit more storage in behind it. So that is the VIP guest cabin. We'll head on back. This one here is the washing machine. Very handy. Bit of storage above it. That's great for linen and towels and all that kind of stuff. The sort of stuff you don't normally know where you're going to put it. That's absolutely perfect. And then if I spin around this way, that then is that door into the heads that we were just in. So that's the door in through to that forward cabin. Now that gets shared also by cabin three. That's in here. Again, really nice size. It dips slightly here because that is where the helm position is. So it goes back underneath the helm. But there's also a step down. So actually, as you come back, it's pretty good. You have to duck a little bit, but you know, it's sat in bed. You've got plenty of headroom. You've got a nice view out of these big hull windows. The St. Catherine dock. And then it's full standing headroom basically from here forward. So plenty of room to get changed. You've got a big hanging locker in here as well. Like so. Storage underneath. Very nice. Let's head across the boat now because if we go aft again, we'll find the owner's cabin. That's in here. There we go. And that brings us back into another really nice, generously sized cabin. There we go. Check that out. Loads of headroom. Also, a pretty flat floor. Just lifts a little bit on that side, which is inevitable on this size of boat, of course. But actually, you'll notice the headroom comes up with it. So even across here, you can walk right around the bed fully erect and uh, and you've got plenty of space even if you're six foot two i like the lighting that you've put in along here they've put storage down underneath here but also you'll see that they've put little power sockets in there as well so you can charge your phone at night there's storage in here and in here so all the way along there is storage and then these big hull windows again and that's a little opening section just there so that's that side. Nice settee over here. Great place to come tuck yourself away with a good book, of course. Another is little dressing tables. And the other thing that this cabin has, I love this woodwork, by the way. Look at the way they formed this up and around. That's very smart. The other thing this has is an ensuite. No, it isn't. <laughs> Let's do that again. The other thing that you've got in here is an absolutely massive wardrobe. It's pretty much a walk-in wardrobe, in fact. You just got to step up slightly. But in here, then you've got hanging rail. You've got all these shelving along here. The safe is in here as well. Loads of space to get all your kit and clobber away. That's a very nice thing. You've got a sound bar underneath the TV, and the TV is in behind that mirror just there. And then this one here, yet more storage. I mean, this is the kind of boat you could really come away for you know, a month or two on, isn't it? It's really good. Ensuite then is here. This cabin is just for this cabin. Again, really good size. So you've got the toilet and the sink. 
You've got a shower here, it's a rainfall shower. A bit of storage up in places like this, and a little wave in the mirror like this. So that's that. We are going to head back up on through to the main deck. Okay, we'll come back up through here. This looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah. Off the back, yeah, like and we will take a tour around the decks, and then we'll head on up to the flybridge. So, that, I wonder whether you can put um, IPS controller in there. That'd be my best guess. Well, I've done this in this dark metallic silver. It's very smart. And then your side decks here take us around up to the foredeck. Big windscreen across there. And then they've put a walkthrough here, so you've got seating and some beds. And that is the top of that. Remember, we looked at the ceiling of the VIP guest cabin, and there's that hatch. We lift that up. That isn't it. <laughs> but that is. There we go. It's hidden under there. So that cushion just, if you wanted to get out of there, even if that was in place, it just lifts off because it's velcroed in place. I'm going to slide that back, not make a mess of people's boats. There is a uh, anchor chain locker in here. Like so. And your anchor winch, of course, is there, and the anchor lives on the bow. Head on around a bit further. That is an Azimuth S6. Tour one of those coming very soon. That's a searchlight up on the bow. It's remote control, and the horn is up there as well. Flybridge is up here, and that is where we're going next. Let's come right back here. Step down and round. And these are the steps then up to the flybridge. <laughs> There's a big bass speaker on here. It's got some nice hi-fi equipment. It's got the adjustable t uh, TV, I was going to say, adjustable table. That's what that button there is for, so you can adjust the height of that. And it looks to me as though, da da da, yeah, you can fold it out as well. So you can make that a lot larger if you want to dine around it. Radar on the back seating all the way around here. You've got the speakers again, dotted around the place. Obviously quite a nice hi-fi system in this one. There's a wet bar up here as well, so that's over on this side. So the barbecue is there and the sink is there. That just lifts up like so. People sometimes say, why is there a mirror? That's actually a stainless steel plate and the idea is if that's still really hot when you put it down, if it's GRP you could scorch it, but with that of course it won't damage it. Underneath there is fridge bit of storage and a flight coming into Heathrow Airport which is not that far away. Some bathing cushions up here on the bow, these are really nice, they're underway because of course you drive the boat here and people can lie here and chat to you and watch the world go by, that's a nice thing. Again this sort of pod design they put on here looks really good and that is the control, the fusion control for that stereo system, like so. And then over here is engine controls and the IPS controller again like we have downstairs. Twin screens on here. So this is configured for engines I think at the moment and then navigation on this side but of course you can set those up however you wish. And that is the control for that searchlight that we saw on the front. So that's the flybridge. It's nice isn't it? Last thing to show you then is the engines. This incidentally closes down so you can drop that down and it infills that and that firstly means that people can't tumble down it of course but secondly, there is a canopy that goes right the way around here. That's what this zip is for. It comes down and encloses this area. So it keeps everything, everything nice and fresh. It also gives you another space in the boat when the weather's not quite so good. Engines then, they're underneath here. And I'll pop my shoes back on, I think. You're probably wondering what these are. <laughs> I know I am. Isotherm. I wonder if they're for keeping bottles cold. I bet they are. There we go. I'll have to look that up later. Okay, steps down. A 
and this is the engine space. This is really roomy in here for a 53 foot boat. The engines are actually very widely spaced. It's a beamy boat and I would imagine that makes it very easy to control because the wider apart you put the engines, the more leverage that you have when you're manoeuvring. These are IPS 950. I think they're 800 horsepower each from memory. Not certain, should have checked, <laughs> but I think they are. You're looking probably 30 knots plus, a bit over 30 knots with these engines, flat out, cruising, mid-20s, 20 to 20, 25 is typical, and range, again, 250 to 300 miles, that's typical, and that's at those sorts of speeds. If you drop the speed right back, you'll get a lot further. What is quite interesting is that the actual IPS pods are a bit further back down the boat. What they've done is put these just like jack shafts in, really, the reason for that is it puts the engines further forward, that moves the weight of them further forward in the boat, and that, if you imagine the boat, the further towards the centre you get the engines, the more balanced it is. So that's quite a nice feature. Very, very accessible engines, <laughs> also known as get atable. And the same with all the plumbing and everything else. It's all really easy to reach. Another engine here, and the generator then, that lives up on that side like so. Very good. Very good indeed. There we go. And that is about the size of that. Let's come back out of here. Spin on round, drop that one down. Where are we going to finish up? Let's finish up on the flybage. Because that's a nice space. I really like the look of this sun pad on the front. So I am going to park myself here. I'm going to say huge thanks to Azimut Yachts here in the UK. I'll put a link to those guys in the description. And huge thanks, of course, to you all for watching. We look forward to catching you on another one of these real soon. Bye-bye.